um, the uh, the MMRF is was founded by a lady named Kathy Juicy, who is a multiple myeloma research or multiple myeloma um, survivor. Um, and so the, a lot of the people that you ran into at the foundation, did a lot of them have ties to the condition? Um, did you see a lot of the volunteers there? Um, were folks like you that had a parent or um, a relative that was diagnosed or had lost the battle to multiple myeloma? Well, watching the whole transformation of the foundation over the years was actually pretty remarkable. Even when I started uh, hosting my golf events, still at that time, very few people knew what multiple myeloma had ever even heard of multiple myeloma. Um, and then there were a combination of, of uh, a number of people in the industry. Unfortunately, some celebrities started being diagnosed with that. So one by one, all these people were then introducing it and it you know uh, really, really uh, grew. So yes, it's amazing how now, you know, I hear, this individual has multiple myeloma, but, but it's, it's, it's much more common. And we're not really sure if back then um, people just weren't diagnosed with it properly, that they had multiple myeloma, or just, you know, more people just know about it now. But it's certainly, you know, much more common for people to talk about it. And, and Kathy, who yeah. runs the foundation, um, is doing great. And yeah, you know, it's great to hear. Well, I, I, I think it's, it's not a typical way to be diagnosed the way your father was, right? And so, um, you know, back when there wasn't a lot of information about the condition, people were probably diagnosed at a much later stage simply because they started to have the, you know, they were feeling poorly, which got them into the doctor's office. And then by the time their diagnosis comes, it's a later stage diagnosis versus, you know, That's right. going to give blood. And it just happens to be this anomaly that, you know, hey, there's something that doesn't look right here. Right, right. So <clears throat> have you seen a lot of um, advancements in the area of science around multiple myeloma? Are, are you still, I know you ended the golf outing, you know, your kids started to, to grow up and get involved in sports themselves and activities, so your time was limited, so the, the golf outing was put on hold for a time being. Um, have you kept up with the, the, the association and the adva advancements they're making? Sure. Um, you know, uh, a perfect example is Celgene. Uh, Celgene's a company that, you know, back in the day was kind enough to get some sponsorship, you know, into the event. They would send some representatives and um, at the time was a very small company. They've had some uh, huge success in the multi myeloma field and today is a you know an enormous company so the amount of things <clears throat> the lifespan that people have now that since diagnosis has dramatically increased um, so there's been a tremendous amount of advancements you know at the time we were able to make sure that some of my uh, money that was being donated would go to a trial here and there and <clears throat> so tremendous amount of uh, support advancement um, the way people are now living with the disease and um, it's it's fantastic really what's happened and and what I hope is that you know even though my father lost uh, his battle some of the things that he was working on and trying at that hopefully you know helped other people later in life yeah um, so Brian people that will be watching this um, maybe maybe somebody that has just gotten the diagnosis or maybe a son that his father just got the diagnosis and if they if they reach out to you pick up the phone and they say hey Brian I happen to see your video and I'm sorry for your loss my father is, or my loved one has just been diagnosed what what would you tell them if they were calling you for advice on just beginning to enter this journey what advice could you give them well, first off, on the treatment of any cancer, or majorly in any disease, I would always talk, you know, make sure you get a second opinion. I think, it's, I think it is important to make sure that you are comfortable with whatever the progression is going to be and treatment. <clears throat> I think it's very difficult to 
read a lot of the material about it if you're not uh, a doctor or a scientist. Right. So I think that's very, right. very difficult. So I think, you know, what you can do is reach out to a community, you know, um, Healthy 360 obviously has a tremendous um, community of people that are involved with multiple myeloma and talk to people, uh, talk to people uh, about their treatments, talk to people about some of the stumbling blocks that they've had, talk to people about, you know, how to handle it financially. And there's a variety of different things that you're going to uh, have to deal with. And um, the easiest way is to find people to communicate with this, tell them how you feel, they'll tell you how they felt. And, you know, hopefully those people, you know, can help you. Um, and I think there are a lot of people that are there to help you both at these foundations, you know, and, and at various uh, companies around the world. You know, you, you make a good point about getting a second opinion, and many, many of my physician friends who are held in very high regard in the area of medicine in which they practice say to get a second opinion. And any doctor that is offended by you saying, um, that you want to get a second opinion shouldn't probably be your physician. Um, I, I believe it is is critical to get a second set of eyes on blood work or you know imaging or whatever it happens to be um, cannot be a bad thing. It's only in the best interest of the patient to get the best kind of treatment for whatever it is you're living with. I think another big thing is I think depending on um, the illness, um, you do want to make sure that you're being treated by a group or a practice or a center that does do some type of specialty in that area. Um, it's not to say that, you know, you can't be treated at a lot of places, um, but, you know, when it comes to something like cancer, I mean, you do want to go to the best. You want to go to someone who's seen more of these cases, who's done more of the trials, who's done more of the treatments. Um, you know, we went to Little Rock, Arkansas. You know, unfortunately it didn't work for us, but there's a reason that I went to Little Rock, Arkansas, because I was told that these are the best of the best. So try and make sure that you're going to a place that focuses on that particular type. But multiple myeloma isn't something that you can, you know, like if, it, you hear that people are diagnosed with lung cancer, for example, and the first thing that you ask is, well, were they a smoker, right? Um, multiple myeloma is like that. There is nothing that you can point to, is there, that um, nothing lifestyle con or uh, work environment? Nothing or concrete. Nothing concrete. No. Yeah. So it's it's just one of these, these things that appears, and you have to deal with it the best way you can, yep. and your point's a very good one, is fine. Find that one specialist that's seen it before, right? That has seen it, that's managed through it, that's got some level of knowledge about that certain type of condition uh, is critically important. Yes. So now um, you're you're back in the swing of charitable work with Vital Options International, a a 30 plus year old foundation that you and I both have the honor of um, serving on the on the board. Um, we're going to re-erect the golf outing, right? So we'll use your experience from the years of conducting golf outing to raise money for Vital Options International. And like your family, you know, as you well know um, from our board meetings, we're seeing people that um, at the end of the day have to make a decision whether they're going to put groceries on their table um, or pay for their treatment. And so um, talk to me a little bit about the importance of that and, and people that are watching. People always come to me and say, well, you know, I want to get involved in some way. What can I do? Um, you know, talk to me a little bit about, you know, how somebody can get started or where they can figure out how to donate their time or their efforts to a worthy cause? Well, look, you know, uh, a lot of people get involved with a lot of different charities for a lot of different reasons. Um, I think it, it usually helps that you're getting involved with something that 
um, you have some experience in and you know maybe you felt some of the pain or some of the you know the hardship that that you went through and then if you can um, take that history that you went through and then help someone else then you know everyone's going to benefit so um, you know with, with with our golf outing there's a, a variety of ways that you know we're going to be raising money from getting people to attend if they play golf some people can just come to the dinner enjoy the ceremonies you can get sponsorships I mean there's a variety of different ways that you know we can make this uh, better and at the end of the day you know we you know we issued a number of grants to people this year um, whether we paid an electric bill whether we put some groceries on a table uh, I know that you've spoken to some of these recipients personally and you know the stories that you tell me of how thankful they are just by someone putting groceries in the refrigerator you know for that week is is something that if someone is going through these treatments you don't realize how much other pressures are on you and if someone just did something like that how monumental it is so I yeah. think uh, we're really excited to, to continue to help more people um, one last question um, you have two children of your own um, when it came time to talk to them about the loss of your father and them not growing up with the grandfather on that side of the family. Um, how did you approach that subject with your children? Well, you know, we talked about it at an early age and then, you know, unfortunately um, they were witnessing a lot of the same emotions, you know, when my mother, my mother uh, recently passed of colon cancer. so. A lot of these uh, emotions had, you know, kind of gotten drum up, and we talked about it. I talked about, you know, unfortunately I'd gone through this before, and these are logical things, and um, so it's just important to talk and to let everyone have open emotions, you know, really about what's going on, and and hopefully, you know, you wish for the best, but you know, as we know, cancer is a very tough one, and. You know, sometimes we lose the battle with it, unfortunately. So, um, open dialogue, emotions. Um, you know, another thing that um, I know is huge. You know, going back to talk about my mother, is it is very important with someone that is actually dealing with the disease for them to be able to talk, and they don't always want to do that. They're tired. They don't feel good. The last thing that they want to do sometimes is get in the car and. You know, go to a counseling session or, or go to an informational meeting. So, the ability to use technology in today's world to talk to other people um, might make them feel uh, a little bit better than they felt the day before. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get on my soapbox here for just a minute because, you know, we always talk at Healthy 360 that early detection saves lives. And in regard to colon cancer, you know, the, the, the rule of thumb is when you turn 50, treat yourself to a colonoscopy birthday present. But if you have a family member, an immediate family member that's been diagnosed with the condition, it's 10 years prior to the age in which they were diagnosed. So if your mother was 50 when she was diagnosed, you should be getting your first colonoscopy at the age of 40. That's right. Um, because we know that, you know, through technology, if we can catch it early, um, we have a good shot at, at beating some cancers. So, um, not to put you on the spot, but I'm hoping that you've uh, you've heeded to that advice. Um, I go and see the doctor all the time. There you go.